going to talk about um, EIP 4844. This is one of the options to scale Ethereum this year. Um, what we're looking at um, is this, this balance between call data and alternatives. We cannot keep like lowering the cost of call data forever. So that is what this EIP is about. I'm Proto, work with Optimism. I used to work with the EF on EF2 research. Um, still working on the same thing, sharding all the way. So what this talk is about, data availability, go briefly through like the basics, then the rollup centric roadmap, the modular blockchain design. I think if you take the like higher level picture, this is it's really about it, not just about scaling or cheaper data. It's like about tearing the system apart so it actually becomes manageable. We have this huge crowd here, and I think nobody really understands all of Ethereum anymore. I know this is a concern, but like the better the interfaces are, the better the modular design is, the better we can scale it. So what's data availability? Is this primary scaling bottleneck of Ethereum, right? I'm sure you all have experienced like the, the expensive call data. Um, so we have canonical, available, global ordering of inputs. This is what the data is about. And then you realize that actually we can separate the, the outputs. We can separate layer two. We can separate the execution layer. Whatever you want to call it, you can think of this as a different scaling bottleneck. And layer one could only just focus on the data availability. And layer two or other systems could increase the processing. So what we really need this data availability for is this permissionless ability to reconstruct state, right? So think about a rollup. A rollup is just data availability with some execution check in a simplified form. Uh, I'm sure you know ZK rollups or optimistic rollups. We have some flavors within this space, um, but they're really all quite similar. We're checking the execution separate from this layer of available data. And so last part of the basics here is that you have this difference between data being forever available and data being once available. So as a layer two system or any system that cares about execution, you just need a, a system to reconstruct the state from. And so you need one homeless actor to be able to do this. And like if you're a maximalist with reconstructing states, you might want the data to be forever available, but if you assume that the layer two system can retain the data as long as there are honest actors in the system, this guarantee gets a lot better where now we can actually sustainably scale data, increase the data by a lot more, and we're only talking about a month of data at that point. And in best of both cases, we can have both. Like Ethereum has this rollup centric roadmap, and we should be looking at solutions where we can like scale the EVM for DeFi, for like this high value bridging system and whatever else it serves. But at the same time, we should look at layer two scaling. And this is an old post from Vitalik 2020. Been thinking about this for a while now. And like really the high level picture is like, this modular design enables us to add scaling. So quick scaling walkthrough, I'm sure you're all familiar with proof of work. Engine API, proof of stake, First part of modularity, we're going deeper. So like it's kind of silly to have layer two execution coupled to layer one execution. We really need this layer one data and like layer two execution. So this is what it looks today like. This is where we want to be for layer two. There are like a high throughput data layer on layer one. We're just putting data. Um, then we have these alternative layer ones Celestia, <laughs> where you have a data layer, you have an execution layer, and you have some kind of rollup system without fraud proofs. I think the value really in Ethereum is that we do couple all these layer twos together. We might have differences, but we do want this variety of like execution environments on, the, on Ethereum. So this is where EIP4844 comes in. The, I mean, it's kind of a joke where we put the proto dank sharding here, <laughs> where I, I guess you know dank sharding where we add a lot more data. This is a step 
towards that in preparation. So what's happening here is we add a data layer. We add blob transactions. These blobs are coupled to the Ethereum chain. A um, little bit abstract here. I'll go more in depth how it's actually being coupled. And the idea is that we can start increasing the number of layer two EVM instances, or like the number or the, the processing power of Ethereum, really. Increasing the capacity. So the life of a blob. So what does this look like? So have some layer use, layer two user creating a transaction, some rollup operator including the transaction. Then we somehow need to push this layer two data onto layer one. So we have a transaction pool where we're taking these blobs, publishing them. And then we have the beacon chain where we embed these execution payloads, but then we are not embedding the blobs forever. The blobs live as a separate sidecar, and so now we can split the lifetime. We can continue processing layer one, we can continue processing the EVM chain with this more lightweight uh, collection of data. But at the same time, we have all these blobs to provide this higher data throughput for layer two. And then layer two can per persist it after we have made it available for a long enough amount of time so we can be sure that honest actors can retrieve the data. So what does this look like? Um, really, if it's going too fast, we have workshops. So if you want to dig into these diagrams or discuss how to improve them, really just join the workshop, please. We have like four hours to uh, get really into the weeds. <laughs> Thank you, Viper. <laughs> so, um, and then we have these blob transactions that are really just like EAP1559 transactions. And at the same time, we're adding this reference to the blobs. The reference is sufficient to authenticate the blob, but then the blob is separate and the blob is stored in the consensus layer. And this way, we can later fit on data availability sampling without changing the transaction format or without changing the execution layer at all. So really, to emphasize, we have transactions, we have blobs, commitments and blobs separate from the blob, and when you're pushing a message through the EVM, it's without the blob data, just with the references, called first hashes or data hashes. So I have these diagrams of simplified layer two designs for everyone to help understand how layer two actually works with blob data. They're a little bit small, but in, during the workshop, we can dig into the format. So in a non-interactive version, you would load the full blob when there's some challenge. In the interactive, uh, oh, missed the slide. No, really, okay, we can go first for our CK validity proofs. I mean, they're really similar to non uh, sorry, to interactive optimistic fraud proofs where in the happy case, really in a good design, you're not loading the full blob during your fraud proof, you're only loading a little piece of data. So you start doing this, and with ZK validity proofs, you do this proof of equivalence so that you don't have to use KZG, but you could use, also use uh, alternative uh, ZK system. Again, same thing for interactive fraud proofs. You just load a piece of the data, and this is like this pre-image oracle. You're loading data by authenticating it against the previously authenticated hash. So you start with one layer one hash, and then from there you can retrieve all the layer one history, dig into all the layer one data, and then from the layer one data, construct the layer two state. Um, so to make this all possible, we're trying to separate the execution and consensus layers. And what we need to do this is to propagate these accepted blob transactions to the consensus layer. And it's not just the execution payload at this point, but we have the sidecar that we need to give to the consensus layer. So we extend the engine API. We can do this in a backwards compatible way, which is nice for testing right now. But then in the future, we might want to combine them. There are arguments against them for this. And then uh, really to finish this talk, um, we have dank sharding coming up which is more blobs. We have data availability sampling. So now like moving these blobs to the consensus layer for storage and management is really meaningful. But in the future, not all consensus layer nodes will store it anymore. We can use sampling to make sure all of the network as a collective has the data, um, but that not any 
every node has to store every single shard. So with sampling, we can secure the consensus layer while distributing the work. Um, and we're looking at a big increase. So this is on top of EIP 4844. So with EIP 4.844, we're looking at a 10 to 100 times increase compared to rollups. Rollups right now are like somewhere in the ballpark of getting like 10 kilobytes per block. Blocks are like 50 to maybe 80 kilobytes. And the, like, we're competing with DeFi for call data. And this call data is used in a way where it provides a lot more functionality. It goes through the EVM. It's forever available, much stronger than we need for a layer two to scale. And so we don't want a separate market that can serve layer two and provide this more specialized uh, ability to serve blob data. And uh, well, after our EPF4 right for four, no more changes to the execution layer. Consensus layer can take it from there. And then this is the end state, end game. Where we have proof of state at stake. We have the EVM on layer one. We have blob data and a massive layer two ecosystem. Okay, thank you. And we'll go uh, for more questions in the session.